Yeah, we're, I don't know who it is. Who originally said it? Oh, I, we're both wrong. Okay. Okay. So oh, what I, twisted? I would have been closer movie. saying Shakespeare. You said Shakespeare. I said Agatha Christie. What? What is it then? The, uh, it comes from a poem by Sir Walter Scott. So at yeah. least I was in the right gender. And a and and, and a poet. And, <laughs> so and you're not, saying, and so you're not saying some women lady can't write things. crime novels. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way that it was the accent that you used, I think, that made me think it was a mystery novel. I did use a falsetto. <laughs> it didn't sound like Do a Do you lady. think that all female authors, then all their characters can only speak in falsetto? <laughs> like, I don't know whether, like, did, did every single character in Harry Potter have a falsetto voice? Well, that's how I would read it if they asked me to... I'm asking you to do that right now. On tape. I'm asking you. No, I can't. You don't have anything in front of me. Oh, oh, hey, look, I'm just going to sit here slowly uh, as my, uh, my chair slowly starts getting shorter and shorter because it's broken and I haven't fixed it yet. This is, this is a theme right now with your lawnmower, with your, with your chair, with your life. <laughs> with everything See? it's all broke everything yeah, sucks sure, uh, everything's bad <laughs> yeah it's pretty bad and i'm a tall guy gonna... so then when it goes all the way to the ground i'm actually like sitting uh, uh at a normal the, as the kids would call it crisscross applesauce because <laughs> <Right? laughs> we're not allowed to say it the other way anymore right that's correct <laughs> <laughs> so now i'm, I'm basically crisscross applesauce on the ground for some reason, I don't know that it's the way that you say it still makes it sound offensive. <laughs> <laughs> Crisscross applesauce. All right. What are we doing? Because we actually didn't even talk about what we're doing. Um, we're doing uh, for, the, for the second time, even though nobody hearing will actually hear it. Uh, Mark chapter 10. Uh, we're, we're having Jesus talk about divorce and uh, little children today. That's it. Nothing That's past it. the little kids. No, let's just let's just stop right. with childhood. I'm gonna. We, uh, can we uh, let everybody know that it wasn't my fault? I don't think it was my fault. It I was know actually I have a your dinosaur. fault. How was it my fault? <laughs> my computer worked all the way through. Yours did not. No, 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 no. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you what? saw me the whole time. I did. So, so I, don't I know. think it was whatever you used to capture. So. One could one could blame me, except uh, how many times have you recorded through candy dishes, et cetera, as a but joke? That, but that's and a so I, I don't know if this was on purpose or not yet, because uh, you'll ride the bit to the bitter end. No, this wasn't. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, did, okay, did, ask. Did, 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 then we probably got to get actually working. Uh, did your uh, did the 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 editor people look how short I am now? They're like this covers my face. <laughs> like hiding behind the pot filter. Did, 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 did the uh, editor people um, have they checked the other ones yet? Like, are yeah, the they're ones fine. that we've done after that? It's fine. It's fine. I checked. I checked. Man, wouldn't it be awesome if I did do something and screwed it up and just played this long game? It sounds <laughs> like a thing that you would slow, do. Slow, slow two month burn. <laughs> that would be cool. <clears throat> sounds like something I'd do. And he being Jesus left there and went to the region of Judea and beyond the Jordan and the crowds gathered to hear him again. And again, it be funny as was if I his did custom, this one? he taught them. <laughs> the Pharisees came up and in order to test him, him being Jesus asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And he answered them, what did Moses command you? And they said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away. And Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. And in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. 
And they were bringing children to Jesus that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. I'm going to need that page, actually. I wish I didn't do that. (laughs) (laughs) Done. (laughs) <laughs> no more Bible for us. Let's just wing it from here. So, uh, no, go ahead. What are you going to ask? No, what is it? I was going to say, what does this mean? Why? Well, I, I don't, well, I don't know. I mean, there's tons we could go. Which way do you want to go? What did we do last time that nobody heard? Doesn't yeah, matter. It was, it's probably bad. So let's just start <laughs> over. Um, divorce, uh, sin break stuff. Let's, let's start there. Um, I, I think sort of instead of saying like what is allowed and what is not allowed, uh, is it a sin if? Um, can I can I find an excuse for? Uh, Jesus doesn't really engage in the kind of discussions that honestly a lot of youth group is where like how far is too far like what what can you do um what what on what grounds can i get a divorce and in all of this jesus just says sin break stuff look a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh it's gonna hurt if you rip it in half yeah i think that's that's our well it's our natural inclination to uh try to justify sin right Mm. and so we do that all the time so we'll we'll justify why when I punched you, it wasn't uh, as bad as when you punched me, right? So there's got to be reasons for that, or You're whatever. Stronger, sure. Girl. Um, but then, <laughs> <laughs> um, but so we're always trying to justify uh, with the law. So, so what that's actually doing, and I think this is the 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 issue with how you're uh, posing the question to begin with, <clears throat> is or one of the issues is. We've we've got um, the inability to correctly understand law and gospel, hmm. and so we'll never actually in in, in trying to justify our our sin um, and, and explain why it wasn't as bad or explain oh no because of these three loopholes it actually isn't a sin blah 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 um, we're not actually letting the law be as uh, damning as the law is. Right. We're not actually letting it uh, swing its way through the crowd with the sledgehammer and, and, and pick us off. Uh, we're just uh, trying to say, no, no, this one's fine. Right. This one's fine. Yeah, this one's fine. Um, so I think that's probably our, our, our first issue with again. And that's what the Pharisees are trying to do here. Right. The Pharisees are trying sure. to say, um, all right, under what circumstances uh, is this uh, 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 allowable? And I think what uh, Jesus is saying uh, uh, is uh, to to quote one of our uh, uh, professors, and, and I love the way that that he would always say this when we would screw it up. He said, "That's the wrong question. That's the wrong question. You're asking the complete wrong question. And if you're asking the wrong question, you'll never get to the answer that you want." Right. Because I, and this is something I'm actually doing on drive to school with uh, Pastor Schomberger, and it's it's a lot of fun because there's a pattern to this. Whenever we ask the wrong question, it's almost always a law question that needs a gospel answer. And if you ask a law question, you're going to get a law answer. Whereas if you ask a gospel question, you're going to get a, a gospel answer. I think you're exactly right because most of the time when we sort of like try to find these loopholes, what we're saying is how can I not get in trouble for this rather than where can I find some comfort and some mercy for this? Right. And in regards to divorce, right, the, what, I, what I'm trying to do, I think what – or what the, the uh, um, Pharisees here are trying to do is because divorce is so egregious, because it does hurt in a way that uh, nothing else does. Mm-hmm. And, and the reason for that is what uh, God has uh, actually made uh, husband and wife to be, right, mm-hmm. this, this one flesh union. And we can go into all of that with – um, how how a sin within marriage is is um, intrinsically worse than a sin outside of marriage. Um, I mean, I think you could probably think of almost every single thing out there, um, and I'm sure somebody will come up with something that oh, this would, but whatever. Generally <laughs> speaking, uh, uh, every sin out there, uh, if somebody it's done have within to the, listen to hear that, what what it's done within the confines of marriage, um, that's bad. It hurts more. Yeah, I lie to you, to yeah, like I do all the time, and it's funny. Right. 
but I lied. I lied to my wife, and and it's awful. I should never right. do that. Right? No, that's fair. Uh, you could also try to not lie to me. Um, you make me lie. That that See, that's that why my spirit is okay. So um, just define it. <laughs> I actually had a question, and it's it's gone now. Um, no, um, so let's let's sort of grab these these sort of like supposed excuses and put it to a test. Mm-hmm. Um, so like the the reasons that that marriage are um, allowed. It uh, what are those off the top of your head? Since Mark doesn't actually give them to us, do you that know marriage is allowed or divorce? Is or allowed? That divorce is allowed. Okay. Divorce that. Uh, if if we're if we're just doing the the, the legalistic things here, yeah. and, and we just uh, let's want be the, yeah, which which two. Uh, uh, will uh, Jesus not uh, frown upon, right? right? That's the way that we want to look at it, right? Uh, that's uh, the adultery and it's the desertion. Right. So let's grab those two then. Uh, since this one's not a sin, obviously there would be nothing broken. So um, go ahead and uh, let's say like uh, a, a husband cheats on his wife and then leaves her. And so it is not a sin. So the kids are obviously going to be fine in this. And she's not really hurt after all, because it's not a sin. Right. It, this one's fine. Uh, no, like these are actually the ones where the, the divorces are the most painful. Have, right. If you've ever dealt with this, the, the, the so supposed excuses for divorce are the most sinful, the most painful ways to deal with it. It's just sort of a recognition, not just that like this one's okay, but rather this is so broken that we can't fix it this side of glory. So you're going to need extra gospel. You're going to need extra Jesus. We're, we're not talking about whether or not uh, divorce is, is allowed, but whether or not it's a good thing or a bad thing. Right. And that's what, that's what, what Jesus was, is getting after. Yeah. Sorry, I cut you off there. Um, with, with, with these two biggies, the ones that, again, are allowed, <clears throat> again, think about in, in its full term, think about exactly what's actually happening, right? So in, in regards to adultery, uh, the guilty party, the adulterer, um, is uh, literally uniting himself with somebody else, right? <clears throat> so literally saying uh, the person that I'm supposed to be united with, uh, I don't care. And I'm going to unite myself in a one flesh union with somebody else, right? That's how egregious it is, right? Saying uh, that which God joined together, <clears throat> I don't care about anymore. I'm going to I'm going to do my own thing over here. Or the other way <clears throat> with the desertion, what do you what do you literally in your actions, if not in your words, what are you literally doing? <clears throat> You're treating that person as if they no longer exist. You're treating that person as if they're dead. Right? I'm out of here. <clears throat> I don't care. Uh, all of the uh, uh, all of the ways in which I was supposed to be uh, connected and united with you and uh, the family and you know the kids, if if there are here, <clears throat> all of these uh, responsibilities that have been given to me as husband or as wife, fill in the blank. Um, I'm released from all of those. And the only reason I'd be released from all of those is if you're dead. So that's the way I'm going to treat you. Might as well. This is a really uplifting podcast. Isn't it? Oh, it's so wonderful. Right. <clears throat> no, like this is this is crushing stuff. Um, so if, if this is the case, then um, I, I think the teachings about divorce uh, – Maybe aren't in terms of of what's allowed, um, but but maybe Paul, uh, he, I think it's Corinthians, First Corinthians ten. He says all things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. Um, okay, so you, uh, how, where are you going with that then? That we're not quibbling over whether or not you can be divorced and still a Christian on the other side of it or forgiven on the other side of it, or can get remarried, because Jesus actually says anyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. But rather, he's pointing out these are the things where you're going to need mercy, you're going to need forgiveness, you're going to need the gospel applied to you. Um, Because if, if you have gone through a marriage, and it wasn't your fault at all, you're still going to have some hurt. And if you get married again, it's still going to bear some baggage. Um, if, if you have a, a marriage where you are abused, get safe. Like, let, let's like, I'm going to go ahead and just say that thing. If you have a marriage where you're being abused, get safe, whether or not that's one of the two biblical reasons, get away. Um, and then recognize that's a place you will need Jesus. You will need mercy. You will need forgiveness. And also just say, it's a bad thing that this is happening. Right. You know? <clears throat> right. And as to be that, the way that you spoke about that, I think is, 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 is interesting um, because we never want to hear about it that way. Right. Because you you had said uh, 
and we're we're using this example of of uh, where it's uh, the the individual is not at fault, right? So if if yeah. you're in a place that's abusive, get safe, right? And then you said, but you're gonna need forgiveness <clears throat> for what? No, you're gonna need to hear about it because right. you're right that that that's not your fault, but you're gonna need the the talk to be <clears throat> rooted in forgiveness, or you'll become a very spiteful person. Well, not only that, I think you're absolutely right. You're going to have to hear this, uh, this, uh, uh, what the forgiveness is, but you're also going to have to hear, uh, and I think perhaps in the English, because maybe we don't have the best way to do it. Uh, you were uh, lamenting how dumb the English language is before we started mm. this. Um, we don't have the uh, 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 kind, of a, spell. <laughs> kind of a word uh, that expresses uh, forgiveness to the individual who... Uh, who didn't shame. commit the action. There's the like, shame we talk about, aspect. Yeah, right. we talk about honor and shame. Um, right. I actually do want to actually, I don't want to just talk about sort of the shame of having this done to you. I do want to actually talk about forgiveness in the sense that you need to hear about forgiveness when you are sinned against, if you intend to be bound to another sinner. Because like if 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 I was hurt profoundly in, in, in a just a sort of a, a gut level fundamental way, uh, I would then flinch the next time I was in that situation. And I would be very quick to read other people's actions into the same thing. I sure. actually do need to hear about forgiveness in a general sense. Jesus died for that sinner who I am furious with. God was furious with it too. God was so furious with that person who hurt me that the only thing he could even think to do to look at his creation was to send his son. And the son was so furious over it that that he actually had to see himself bear the cross just so that he can look at this person and say, they're forgiven. It was not okay, but it is forgiven. And that's how we start to go forward. We do need to eventually get to honor and shame too, though. You're right. right. Honor is not really the greatest word for it, but it's it's the best I can kind of come up with. Yeah, no, I like how you put all that. <clears throat> um that's that's, that's exactly how yeah it's not often that too um but um it's no it, it's it is how we need to hear it uh absolutely and then the and then the other way the way in which i can maybe at some point uh deal with the shame um well not uh, i hate to say ah uh, it's so it's so hard to, to to speak about this way we need to hear that that those sins have been uh i think the the closest language we have is remitted taken mm-hmm. off of us, right? So the shame that has been placed upon us has been remitted from us. It's been taken off of us. Even though it wasn't our fault that that shame got heaped on us, the, the cross still uh, uh, still carries that burden for us too. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> the, so the then, identity is, is whole, is right. undefiled. It's clean. Right. It's baptism That's, talk. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Uh, the, the, the dirt and muck and mire is washed away, whether uh, I put... The, the dirt on or somebody uh, flung mud at me, um, mm-hmm. the baptism washes it away. Yeah, um, which which gets a little bit to the language that we use around divorce um, uh, of t- in terms of fault or no fault. Like we, we tell people that it's not your fault. And even if it's true, it doesn't make them feel better. Um, and, and so what you're getting at is a really important point. Um, it might not be your fault, but it might still be your burden to carry. And so what do you speak to to that? And there you you want to go to the identity given in baptism. You want to go to the fact that God does not see you as less. In fact, he has died to make you whole. He, he has washed you so that all of those things that were put on you are washed away. And you get that every day in your baptism. Right. It's not your fault is, <clears throat> it's one of those terms that we use when we don't know what else to say. And Well, we're still trying to justify in the law. It's not right. going to work. Right. Again, uh, chances are, like, um, um, I, and I don't know, but I, I would guess, especially in the in the scenarios that we're bringing up, like the mm-hmm. person knows it's not their fault, right? Right. Those are the, actually the two things that that uh, the Lord gives us, sort of like the acceptable reasons for divorce. It's one person's fault and not the others. But that doesn't mean that the other person mm. is without burden. In fact, they're the one with most of it. Sure. Right. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so it's icky, and uh, more than icky. It's a, a, a very underwhelming way to speak about it. But that's kind of how uh, the Pharisees are almost treating this, right? Right. Like, yeah, it might be a little icky, um, but yeah, we could do it. And and the and the problem is Have a certificate. With, it's fine, right? And that, exactly. <laughs> the certificate. That's the permission slip, right? Um, and that's the problem too, because uh, at this point, um, by the New Testament time, well, I think there was two different 
<clears throat> there was two different groups of people who who uh, uh, heard Deuteronomy 24 differently, right? That's where they're getting this from. Mm. Um, there was some that actually still uh, heard it in a way that, uh, no, no, like we're talking unchastity. We're talking unfaithfulness sort of stuff. That That's what it means when uh, if, if you find something, how does it even say it in, in Deuteronomy 24? If you find something uh, un, uncouth of your wife or something like that, right? I, it's not a real word. People don't use it anymore. Uncouth. Um, but, uh, and then there's that other group of people, which it seems to be these Pharisees. And that's why they're kind of uh, uh, wording the question like they do, right? For any reason. Like if I, if I find something in my spouse that I don't like, right? Mm. Um, then, uh, oh, then see, have Moses gave me this, uh, uh, this chance to get out, to get out of jail free card, right? And all I got to do is I have to just do the, the, the three mm-hmm. right steps. Yeah. And then on the other side, I, I'm everything's fine. Do you remember Book It from when you were a kid? It was a, it was a summer reading program where it, that's the word. I, that's what comes to mind when I think of certificates. So kids, uh, back in back in my day, uh, we had a summer reading program to make sure that kids would not just sort of get up into trouble every day. And you would read books and then you would you would tell the librarian that you read the books, and if she believed you, you could get a certificate for a personal pan pizza from Pizza Hut. <laughs> That's right. It was the most glorious thing. <laughs> That's right. The personal That's what I think of when I think of certificate. It's got the little the little uh, clip art of the book on the side, and I get some pepperoni pizza that's just for me, and I don't have to share it. And I'm pretty sure that's exactly what the Pharisees would present to each other as they right. as they divorced right. each other. Even, even even though even though they uh, they knew that I they didn't read any of the books, books that I read, right? Yeah. right. Like, uh, so what I'm actually putting on this certificate uh, isn't what happened, but go ahead, but... go ahead and sign it off. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. It's just it's just brutal, right? Brilliant like, program though, um, because like Pizza Hut sold a lot of pizzas that way. Think of, like you're not just gonna like take your kid and watch them spend 30 minutes as slowly as possible eating a personal pan pizza. Like you're gonna go and buy a whole real pizza, right? For, they knew that. Yeah, they knew I didn't three, read those books either. This was a money making thing. This. Yeah. Right. Oh, 100. percent. Right. Yeah. Then you get that stuffed crust, which is, <laughs> oh, that was yucky. I loved that. You I liked it. it. I liked it. It was like putting a cheese stick in That's the back of your pizza. That's all it was. It was a melted yes, cheese 100%. stick. <laughs> it wasn't anything fancy. I don't need it to be fancy. I need it to be good. Cheese sticks aren't fancy, but they're delicious. <laughs> oh. It's a stick of cheese. You got to set your standards the right way. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fair enough. All right. Are we, ready to, are we ready to talk about Jesus and little children since we're on to book it? Yeah, yeah, that works perfectly, right? Uh, and the and the two just seamlessly uh, they do go into each other, which uh, I don't think is there's a reason. Um, yeah. yeah, there's there's absolutely a reason, right? Go on. Um, when you're talking about marriage, um, you you must also talk about kids, right? It's just that that's that's from from whence they came, right? Right. Uh, and, and again, it's like oh, but there's so many instances where they're not, and but we're talking about no. The way in which from from the beginning God created mm-hmm. them man and woman that they would be one flesh and procreate right so the way in which our Lord has actually laid this out is in the confines of marriage this is the best thing for kids perfect mm-hmm. let's let's have it that way right yes we do realize that the world is broken and there, there's a lot of instances where kids aren't in the confines of marriage right maybe at the beginning or somewhere in the middle um, and those things need to be fixed, but can only be fixed by the gospel. And can't. So, yeah, this is actually it, though. I'll go ahead. No, I was going to say. So, uh, just kind of going about what we're saying here. It's, it's yeah. These little these little ones. Uh, yeah, they need to be. They need Jesus too. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. I mean, not just not just uh, in the uh, the general space of it, um, but even in the specific space of it. For specific sins that they've committed or in the context of, and maybe there's just part of it too. Maybe this is part of what Mark's trying to get to, um, but in the context of a divorce too, of, of all the situations where you've got innocent people, mm-hmm. the kids are, are certainly the ones that are, that are bearing the brunt of this. And they're right. probably also oftentimes the ones who are sitting there thinking, 
if I had just been a better kid, maybe fault. mom and yeah. dad would still be together. Right. Ah, it's brutal. It, when it comes to these these kinds of things, then um, it, instead of just confronting, I can't fix this, I need Jesus for it. It's so often that we try and sort of come up with a, well, in this circumstance, it's okay. Um, and and we, we always love to turn into the law what was given as a gospel. So maybe just with this, we can say marriage is a good gift from God. Let's do our best to protect it. And children are a good gift from God. Let's do our best to protect it. Now, we can push both sides into lawlessness or too much law. Right. You, you can push into uh, too much law marriage. Uh, so much so that um, like we, we can make some some really elaborate courting ritual where we can somehow not break the sixth commandment, even though you're breaking the sixth commandment in your heart. Um, and, and we we can set That's up the marriage just <laughs> for you, maybe. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, we can we can um, we, we can go to to really sort of archaic um, understandings of, of marriage that are not rooted in, in um, love or sacrifice, but are rooted in property. Uh, and it gets really gross really fast. And in the same way, we can make children, which are a good gift from God, very much into a legalistic thing. So we're like, you're a better Christian if you have more kids. Um, and I don't think that's a good thing either. Um, if you are taking a child's life, that's that's wrong. Don't do that. In this, if you are breaking a marriage, that's wrong. Don't do that. But at the same time, I, I think that there's a great freedom here in that Jesus thinks little kids are a good thing. So let's maybe not despise that. Children are a good gift from God. If you right. want no children in your life, that 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 we should we should have a talk. Um, I understand that they're a burden. I understand that they're a sacrifice. I understand that it's hard. The greatest gifts are. They, yeah. they, they really are. And that's what love is. Love is is not sort of I have taken from this, but love is I have I have sacrificed for this. That that's what love is. And so when you talk about marriage, you talk about sacrifice. You talk about love poured in. And when you talk about kids, it's the same thing. Uh, we we can get into you know how many kids and birth control is probably a thing that we're going to have to eventually touch on with this. But I don't want to make it into a law what God gives as gospel. Right. Right. And uh, you're right, because like you said, there could be the legalism, right? So if mm -hmm. the, you got to have 10 kids, right? Um, and that's not where we're going uh, with it necessarily, right? And yet at the same point in time, uh, like you said, uh, uh, in, in the context of marriage, um, one shouldn't um, despise the prospect of right. children, right? 100%. And, and, and uh, forever and always um, uh, uh, try to um, try to not receive one of one of those gifts right um yeah it's just crazy um but yeah in in, in this instance it's really interesting too uh and, and i we could probably go into the whole context of uh right or wrong um good or bad uh but can i get a certificate <laughs> for birth control please <laughs> Right in these in these situations, it is okay. Um, it's just yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, for the fact that the disciples here and I think the the society in general are are saying that these kids um, uh, don't need Jesus. We're just trying to keep them away. They're sure, a problem. Sure. They're in the way of the important stuff, like Jesus. Right. Instead of they're meant to receive Jesus. They're meant to receive Jesus, right? And that's what Jesus is is basically saying here. It's just like, no, just stop. Like I'm I'm for everybody. I'm for these little kids, and so mm -hmm. uh, 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 bring them to me, right? Uh, right. This is this is who the the kingdom of God uh, belongs to. To these poor, helpless individuals uh, who can do nothing uh, for themselves, literally have to have mom carry them uh, right. so that I can bless them. Um, and that's what it is to receive the, the the kingdom as a little child. We already did this the first time this came up in this gospel. Right, right. It's exact. It's ex exactly right. One hundred percent. It's it's we're receiving it as uh, helpless babes. Mm -hmm. That's that's the only way that we, the only way that we can receive it. What What's interesting? Uh, reading a commentary just uh, uh, for uh, at risk of of going off on a, a tangent. Um, uh, the commentary uh, had said that uh, this is the, the in every other place in the in the Gospel of Mark where we hear of Jesus actually uh, uh, laying his hands upon some somebody, touching somebody. Um, it's always in the context of, of healing, like actual healing, healing, right? Um, not just a, a, a blessing, but actually a, a healing, healing. The blessing obviously comes comes with it. Um, 
Hmm. So I'm curious if if this is like uh, just to kind of e- even uh, bring apart uh, or bring about uh, the the understanding and the and the gravity of the situation even more. If this was the situation, not just were these uh, healthy uh, infants, but were these like sick, sick and infirmed infants, like even more helpless, helpless infants, right, being brought, and then the disciples are like, "Oh, the heal, the blessings." No, mm-hmm. no, they they don't get this. Get away, get away, right? There were though. I mean, especially in a in a time where infant mortality was so high, um, there there is a place where it's it's so callous. But like you read about it, and you're like, so did people just sort of write this one off? Like 50-50, fifty, fifty, I'm going to see you at your second birthday, so we'll see how it goes. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I can't I, imagine. I, I can't for no, the life of me imagine that. And I can't. I can't either. But but the the you're right. The the losing of children was far more prevalent than it is now. Do you think it hurt less though? Because no. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it hurt less. But I think as a society, it was understood, right? And so sure. and so yes, you you had. It's like no no. Uh, uh, Rick and Mary lost their kid, um, and everybody around is like, oh, well, that's happened to me. Uh, I get yeah. it, and, and and but but then also probably everybody understands why Rick and Mary are are hanging out at home wailing for the next two weeks. Sure, yeah. I don't know why we got on that awful, uh, dreadful because we were steering away from uh, birth control because uh, you didn't <laughs> want to talk about it. You want to? You want? So I opened the can of worms. I think we got to at least put a put a bow on that before we close down for the you day. Brought- man i did bring it up so um i I, i'll go ahead and be the one to say it then um there there are different kinds of birth control there's abortive birth control which takes a life and that's that's sinful because it's against the it's against the fifth commandment i think when it comes to birth control we don't need to invent new laws we can go to the 10 commandments that we already have um is it against a commandment and i think there are some places where it might be but i also think there might be some places where it's not I think you might be right. Um, and again, this is just uh, my my wife uh, speaking, being a nurse. Um, and again, we're probably diving into an area, uh, at least when I'm speaking medically, that, that uh, I'm certainly not an expert on. What I would say uh, for people out there is um, figure out how the birth control works. Yeah. Right? Figure out how it works. Because that will help you speak to whether or not it's against a commandment is, right. is, is it uh, regulating menstruation or is it not allowing fertilized eggs to implant into a uterus? Because birth, right. there's different types of that. So birth control. That's just it. There are different, some are abortive, some take a life. And, and that's, that's a different conversation to be had. Um, but one of the, the things that we can, we can do with this though, is we can take very, very specific sufferings and apply a very, very general law towards them and bring about a bunch of guilt while at the same time, uh, applying sort of very, very general justifications to allow very, very specific sins to go unaddressed by Jesus, who actually wants to forgive them. Um, and so there are medical conditions and, and quite frankly, um, even just mental and physical conditions uh, that, that happen worldly where it says this might not be the right season for you to have a child um, for any number of reasons. And there are ways to, to address that. And I don't think it's a sin to not have as many kids as possible all the time because Jesus calls them a blessing. I, I think, however, taking a life is is wrong. And, and we need to sort of find a conversation that's in the middle of that, but it happens on specific circumstances. And so if you can't actually speak about the specific circumstance and the specific form of birth control, it's hard to have a conversation of right and wrong about it. But if you're embarrassed to talk about it, that might also sort of already speak to it a little bit. Like if, if, if the, the situation going on is not something that you can bring to light to a pastor who wants to forgive your sins or to your spouse, who is, is your, your, your other half, that's that's already pretty that's telling right and i i, I, I lo- everything you said there i i'm in complete agreement with uh, uh, but i would change one thing um hmm. and, and i don't even think y- y- you meant it i uh it, you said uh, uh uh whether or not we could figure out if if it's right or, or wrong um and i would say that maybe the better mentality of saying whether or not we should we can figure out if it's good or evil 
I actually like that better. Yeah. Right. I actually, that is one of those rare times where you correct one thing just to not be, to, to do a bit. Good or, <laughs> right. good or evil is a good way to talk about this. Yeah. Right. Go on. Because, the because that's we'll, just, we'll and, and I know we're running up on time here, but, no, but, but that's just it. The, what we're talking about here is not right and wrong is uh, I jumped through the right hoops and now I can't get in trouble right for price. it. Yeah, good yeah. and evil is, is what I'm doing of life or is what I'm doing of death. Um, and, and, uh, to what, to what end is, is my goal. So, sure. well, that got it did much deeper weeds than I thought it would. That's okay. Right. Yeah, I guess. Talked about, I, talked about book it at least. Hey, <laughs> and, and cheating the system. Right. Yeah. For a, Get for the a man. really terrible personal van pizza. <laughs> but it was yours. The punishment fits the crime. <laughs> we out. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>